The moment we've all been waiting for is here. Nano Banana Pro was released by Google today and it is insanely good. I ran a huge amount of tests across all different challenges and use cases, plus comparisons to other models. This was a huge deep dive covering everything it can do. I wanna start with something that blows my mind the most. It's capabilities with text generation, including lots and lots of text. So infographics are a really good way to showcase this. Create a diagram that covers the history of LLMs. And these examples will showcase another part that makes this such an impressive model. It uses Gemini 3, which is one of, if not the best LLM now, to reason through the prompt first before deciding how to generate the image. It can also utilize search when needed to gather information or real-time data. Once it's finished generating, I can open up the thinking dropdown and see what steps it took. Tracing the LLM evolution, mapping it all out, outlining key milestones, developing the diagram, then went back through to analyze, focusing on the accuracy to make sure the history was correct. You can even see down at the bottom here the different links it went to to ensure its accuracy. Now this is what it got. This is a very aesthetic design and every piece of text all over this is perfect. And this clearly illustrates the history all the way up to 2025. Even as the little legends down here to explain what each of the colors mean. Like this is such an insane thing to be able to do this easily. And as you can see, this was just one shot text to image generation. It wasn't image editing, which was the area that the original Nano Banana really excelled at. But let's do another. Create a diagram that explains quantum superposition. That's a super nice design. It illustrates the concept well and is just overall very aesthetic. This is amazing. Now here's another one I saw going around. I need a flow chart for how to. I saw toast bread, but I will try brew coffee. Make it as wacky and over the top and complicated as possible. And already I just love the design of this. Like these graphics are just incredible. It's called the absolute madman's guide to brewing coffee. You initiate the protocol, then summon the bean oracle, sacrifice a pastry to appease the coffee gods, bean vibration therapy. If you actually go through each of these, these are pretty funny. Like the quest for the purest H2O, one of these is filtration through unicorn tears. Or this one was use tap water, you monster. Then this brewing process where chaos ensues with just lines going everywhere. Then perform the coffee dance, an essential step, or sing to the grounds, don't be shy. Then this final one, the consume the elixir of chaos. That's a great image of that. The rocket on his back, steam coming out of his ears. Honestly, this is just unreal how good this is. Not just the overall aesthetic design with perfect text everywhere, but also pretty clever and funny throughout the whole thing. That is just unbelievable. Here's an idea I saw from Reza Martin on X, showcasing another one on how it can use search before generating. Look up the five best vacuum cleaners under $300 and create an infographic with pros and cons for each. So we can see where it searched to find all that information, it has the pros and cons of each, it has a picture that looks accurate to each of these vacuums. It does have number three listed twice. Maybe that was just to make it fit better in the image. But either way, that was first try and this is just amazing. I asked for pros and cons lists of different products sometimes in Gemini or ChatGPT and having it generate a nice little visual like this is super helpful. Now, I did so many more of these infographics. I did how nuclear energy works, how to cook the perfect steak, how to perform the Heimlich maneuver, the five most famous constellations. I thought that was pretty impressive to have the layout of each constellation perfectly. The solar system with one fact about each planet, a language cheat sheet for English tourists visiting China with pictures, and this Chinese is all correct. A flyer with three pizza places you should go to while visiting Naples. This is just one of those things where after experimenting with all of the iterations of text image models over the past couple of years, just truly blows my mind more than anything else I've seen so far. It can do a lot more that I'll cover, but this is just so impressive to me. And here's a pretty crazy one I saw from Fofer AI on X. This is a ton of text to get right. So I'll paste that in and then it says, put this whole text verbatim into a photo of a glossy magazine article on a desk with photos, beautiful typography design, pull quote, and brave formatting. It looks like he had just pasted in the text from this blog post, so I'll do the same and generate. And there it is. Like that is perfect formatting. It has the quotes here, generated images to go along with it, place that all on a magazine. Just skimming through this, I don't see a single error in any of this text, and that is so much to be adding in there. That is just insane. I'll move on from these text-based ones. That is completely mind-blowing to me. And a lot of this is actually useful and could be used in production today. Like not just some impressive tech that will get there someday. It's there for a lot of things right now. But moving on, I made multiple videos on the first Nano Banana release. And I also made one comparing it to the other five leading AI image editors. So I took some of the hardest challenges that none of them could get right before and ran it through Nano Banana Pro. 
So I'll start with this one, where I had just a map of Europe and said, make the country of France red with a glowing outline, also label it as France. None of them got it right. They either just highlighted random areas or got the shape of France, but just overlaid it over the entire continent. So I tried that out and got this back. And that is actually where France is on the map. So it got this on the first try with it labeled, but it did miss the island. So it's not 100% perfect, but I just said, you missed Corsica and it knew exactly what I meant and fixed it. So that is super useful. This was from an example I had of creating motion graphics using Nano Banana, which I had to do a lot of workarounds before to get it to actually work. But the new model would save a ton of time. And from that same example, the previous models failed at, I asked it to add an Eiffel Tower popping up on the map in 3D where it is actually located in France. None of them got it in the right location. It's supposed to be kind of right up here. So I tried that out and it got it in the exact right spot. Now here was another one that was a struggle before. I have this image of a rhino and then wanted it to change the angle, zoom in and highlight the upper horn as red. So on the first try, did a great job with changing the camera and zooming in, but highlighted both of the horns. So I said only the upper horn should have the red glow and it fixed it. So super quick and easy to fix that and it looks amazing. And here I wanted to remove all the people from this image. It's a pretty difficult one to do that in with the glass it's looking through. There's all these shadows. It's hard to tell where they're coming from. People are obscuring different parts of the scene. Pretty difficult challenge, and it got it better than each of the previous models did. And this is basically perfect. I might be able to find some tiny errors if I try. Like I can't quite tell what's going on here by these windows. Little things like that. But overall, I would say that is near perfect. And here's a classic prompt I went with. We turn the photo into a character figure, replace the box with the character's image behind it, and also have a computer showing the blender modeling process on its screen. But I used a particularly challenging image. It got super close, like this is amazing. The blender model is basically perfect. The only issue I see with the figure is it's missing these rocks here. But other than that, it nailed this. That's a super difficult one to get. And again, I was on the first try. Or here is a pretty tricky one. Swap the clothes between these two people. And it got it perfect. Now this one was a struggle for all of them before. Create an image of this Drake meme, but give Drake my face. Add the Photoshop logo to the top right quadrant, then an image of a banana and the text Nano Banana in the bottom right quadrant. So some of them were close, but none of them really got it. But Nano Banana Pro got it on the first try. Now most people, including myself, are using Nano Banana as part of their overall content creation process. It's been a huge time saver for me. And another way to level up is with this free resource provided by HubSpot, their AI content creation checklist. It's a quick guide to using AI across your entire content workflow. It's broken down into sections of that workflow, like ideation, creating quality content at scale, tailoring to your audience, and brand consistency. Each step has a checklist on how to implement AI to help optimize and streamline each area, helping you plug AI tools into your process without losing your brand's voice. If you implement these steps, you can significantly level up and streamline your content creation. AI helps you automate tasks and scale so you can focus on the strategic elements. Again, this resource is free. The link is in the description. And thank you to HubSpot for sponsoring this video. A major use for this type of model is generating consistent characters. So I'll start off with an image of me and I'll say man surfing riding a barrel wave. And for reference, here's how the previous models did with that. You can see that Sea Dream and Reeve were really good at looking like me, but the images had weird compositions and perspectives and just weren't great. Like their base image models aren't as good. And Nano Banana 1 had good image generation, but the face was only okay. The others just weren't good at all. Now with Nano Banana Pro, this image is amazing, like really solid composition and just a nice action shot. And my face looks perfect. It is a huge improvement here. Could also just do man skydiving. Again, that is a really solid shot. How about volcano boarding? Okay, that one is awesome. Again, solid action shot. The goggles are covering the eyes, but even with that, you can tell it looks just like me. One more of these, a man hang gliding. That is a great image. I don't know what I'm seeing over here to have that expression on my face, but it looks incredible. So all of those were amazing on the first try. When I did all these tests before, I generated four images with each model and picked the best. Being able to get these right on the first try saves a ton of time. But here's a more difficult one. Give me a grid of this man with different emotions, a three by two grid of happy, sad, excited, scared, embarrassed, and angry. And there it is. Those are the correct emotions in each square. Keeps my face super consistent through every one of those. That is just insane. I also tried myself in different styles. A Minecraft character, Grand Theft Auto, South Park, 
rubber hose animation, and an action figure in a box. I nailed every one of those. I've got another more difficult one I've done before, create a movie poster using my face. It will be a parody of The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly called The Good, The Bad, and The AI. It should have a Western theme, but with an AI crossover twist. Maybe a robot as one of the characters or something. I can let it think from that. And here's what I got. That's a really solid design. I like the binary on the sun in the back. That's a nice touch. And this character looks exactly like me. There's nice typography for the good, the bad, and the AI. And we got a fistful of code directed by, <laughs> directed by algorithm. Right, like that is actually hilarious. Good job, Google. I'd say that's by far the best option compared to when I ran all these before. It is just amazing with that type of thing. But let's try with a different character so you don't have to keep looking at my face. So Nano Banana 1 was pretty hit and miss with this before, but I've got this mid-journey character here. I asked for her riding on an elephant. So she's just standing next to it, didn't get the prompt perfectly, but got every detail of her face, even down to the nose ring, essentially perfect. But still a great job overall. Also tried her riding an iceberg in the middle of the Arctic Ocean. So again, kept all the details and the nose ring and everything, but even added some frost on her face and eyelashes. That's a nice touch. We got walking out of a spaceship on Mars. That's a really nice shot there. Then I also did a close-up of her walking through a nightclub. Great shot. Even all the faces in the background look coherent. Like no morphing anywhere in this image. Great job on how the light is cast across her face and kind of curves around her nose here. And the way it interacts with her hair looks really natural. It did amazing with those. These are all basically perfect. Like I think it missed the nose ring on one of them. But other than that, just amazing and a huge step up from the previous model. And I also tried having two consistent characters, me and her having a drink at a bar. Got that right too. Or how about a different two characters? Me and then this person, a candid selfie of these two people hiking together. And it nailed it, that looks awesome. Although that's kind of a weird spot for me to be sweating, but all right, other than that, looks great. So it does all of that incredibly well. Another challenge that goes along with consistent characters is changing camera angles. Those things are both pretty necessary when trying to craft a sequence. So I have this image of a Mongolian horseman I generated in Mid Journey. Change the angle to a front view full body shot with the horse and men's full bodies facing the camera. And this is what came back. Like that looks just perfect. Even down to the small details, like this little mark on his cheek. It is starting to feel like we have just solved consistent characters and scenes with this. I went through a couple using this anime scene at the market. Give me a bird's eye view of the market, a top-down aerial angle. That looked like this. You can see both the characters right there with the little cat. About what I would expect that market to look like. And it looks pretty accurate as if the original image was taken from this guy's perspective, kind of over this table here. I think those are even the same fruits from the original image. These little probably lemons and then apples here. There they are in the image and the cat is behind them. And the basket of fruit here, basket of fruit there. It was really impressive to get those small details. I said, give me a close up of the woman. Looks great. Close up of the man. Perfect. And a close up of the cat. Honestly, just nailing all those again on the first try. Now, here's another one they all kind of struggled with before. They could create character turnaround sheets, but when I asked to retain the original pose of this skeleton ballerina here, Reeves sort of got it, although she was switching hands, but really none of them looked that great or did a good job at retaining the pose. But here's Nano Banana Pro. That's her left hand up in each of the shots. I and mean, the way her legs are crossed here, trying to retain that from the different angles. It was a pretty difficult challenge. But yeah, got it perfect from every direction. Another quick one here was changing styles. I've got this image of three friends I generated in Mid Journey. Convert this to 3D animation style. Got it. Into anime, into street art graffiti. Really good at changing styles. And here was a challenge that only Quen could get right before. Make the characters in a fight scene corresponding to the pose drawing. Skeleton ballerina on the left, pimp cat on the right. In a neon lit disco nightclub. So none of them matched this pose drawing very well, except Quen, got it perfect. Although I didn't like the way it generated the image that much. All the others just kind of picked their own pose. And with Nano Banana Pro, it couldn't get it either. It again, picked its own pose for it. So it seems like it is not good at that. Although that's kind of a random challenge that you probably wouldn't use very often. But I also tried it in an abandoned 1970s casino and in a dark alley. And not something you'll use a lot, but I was surprised it didn't get that. But moving in a different direction, how about some marketing use cases? I have this product that was using the Futurepedia logo, but I created an energy drink called Future Fuel. Then I said, give me a modern landing page for this product. And here's what came back. The design looks great, but weirdly it didn't get all the text right. I was surprised by that since it was so good at text before. Like improve energy and energy that wait for your mindsiness. Honestly, it was really weird it didn't get that one. Even on the second try, there's still just minor issues with text. Like it's pretty close, just not all the way there. I don't know why it gets so much text right when generating from scratch, but not when it's using an image like this. 
But I also tried uploading that same image and saying, change all the text to Chinese, keep everything else the same. And this is what I got. Looks like it added a bit of text at the bottom. That wasn't on the original, so it didn't follow the prompt of keep everything the same. But I'll use Google Lens and see what this looks like. The greatest energy of the future fuel AI era. Order now, and then all of this at the bottom. Help improve your focus, allowing your brain and mind to concentrate. So it looks like all the stuff at the bottom is relevant to the original image. So good job on the translations and accurate text, although not perfect with following the prompt. But how about adding my product in some different images? Or I place this monster can with the future fuel can. This is from Mid Journey, that's why the text is off. But came back like this, really solid. Or I've got this woman holding a can. I'll try replacing that with the future fuel can. It does a great job replacing it. Looks very natural. But if I zoom in super close, it doesn't show this smaller text accurately. I had this issue with all the previous models. So I tried again with this guy on the dirt bike and had that same issue. The text is just not right. It's pretty tough with text that's that small on the image. But with a product that doesn't need a ton of tiny text on it, that would be great. And this can be super, super useful for a lot of different marketing use cases. You may encounter some scenarios where it's not perfect, like needing tiny text like that. But for a ton of stuff, this is already production ready to be used in marketing. Now, I've been keeping an eye on X today, and there's a ton of interesting examples people have come up with. So I'm going to try to recreate them using the same prompts they had. This is from Carlos Santana, Reconstruct the Original Ticket. Looks like that worked well for him, so I'm willing to try the same thing. And that one did not work for me. Um, really not at all. So I don't know if he used a few tries to get there, but that one did not work for me. I really liked both of these from Justine Moore. So I'm just going to try them both. An X screen showing the most popular tweets of all time. So yeah, that one didn't work for me either. But it looks like it was going for the same tweets as hers did. I guess one from Obama and Elon Musk. And maybe it takes a few tries. Her other one was a flyer with three places chocolate lovers should visit in Paris. And that one's looking great. So Paris, a chocolate lover's pilgrimage. Has three different locations. All of the text looks perfect on each of them. So yeah, nailed that one. Although I did like the design it came back with on hers a bit more. On this one from Frederico Lixclet. This does look like a super difficult challenge. Create an image of an analog clock reading 1532. Not digital and no other time. A burger with grilled golden provolone cheese and a glass of red wine filled to the brim. Looks like it got it right for him. Even down to the timing on the clock. I'll be surprised if this works for me because I've been trying some clocks out and it gets really close but not perfect like this. Mine haven't displayed perfectly accurately like that so we'll see how it goes. Yeah, and as I expected, it got pretty close. This wine glass is not filled to the brim. The clock is actually way off here. Um, that is worse than previous clock attempts I've had. The reflection looked really nice in it. So the image is good, but yeah, maybe it just takes a bunch of tries to get some of these right. So I'm going to try to edit the time on the clock with the time that I originally wanted. And it changed it to a different incorrect time. I'll try with an easier time. And there we go, it actually got it that time, 3.30. I'll try again to see if we can get it to 3.32. And that's it's pretty close, 3.33. I'll go with that close enough, but again, that wine glass was not filled to the brim. Make the wine glass all the way full, filled to the brim. It did fill it up some, not quite to the brim, but the brim is actually out of the shot here. So that doesn't make it more of a challenge, but that's close enough to let me know that I could get there with this. And I really like this one from Min Choi. Generate the holiday photo of this person through the ages up to 80 years old. I'm not sure if he started with a holiday photo of himself for one of these. I'll see if it works with just a random image of me. Yeah, I kind of knew what it was going for. I like me at 25 with no beard. And then 45 looks pretty good. It's choosing just a different holiday for each one, I guess. 65 cutting a turkey. I'd say that looks about right. Then at 80, I don't know that I think that looks like me at 80, but yeah, not bad. It kind of knew what it was going for. I love the result he got on this. I was trying to just match the prompt that he used. I would definitely use a different prompt to try to get it to generate each of these. His was just awesome. Like having the mask on for the 2020s. Then I guess in the 2030s, we're going to have these floating screens. In the 2050s, he's got the kind of kids and grandkids around. He got a great result. I'll try this one again from Fofer AI. A photo of the sci-fi books I could read. Pretty simple prompt, but a great result just from that. And yeah, it worked for me too. Got Dune, the Three Body Problem, Neuromancer. I'm actually kind of curious if these are exactly what these books look like. There's one of the covers of Dune, and yeah, looks like it got it. I'll try one of these lower ones. Check out Neuromancer. So here's one of the cover options. And yeah, I mean, it looks like it, it's the right color scheme at least. Maybe not perfect, but definitely on the right track. I mean, that's actually insane. It's able to get those little details like that. That's a, yeah, simple prompt, but actually kind of blows me away.
Nano Banana Pro has unlocked so many different use cases. So I'm blown away by this release. It's been a ton of fun to experiment with. If you want to go much deeper into learning AI, we have a full course platform on Futurepedia with over a thousand lessons across over 30 AI courses. You'll find full learning paths on everything from ChatGPT to video generation to coding with AI and everything in between. It's all included in one subscription. You can get a seven day free trial using the link in the description. Or if you want to go deeper into some of the other tools Google has in their lineup, check out this video right here. 33 Google AI features you won't believe are free. There's a ton of amazing use cases in there.